Hello, this is part two of a video series concerning exercise physiology. A quick recap on last video, we looked at the anatomy of the skeletal muscle. We looked at the gross structure, which is the whole muscle unit connected to the bone via tendons. Here it is, the muscle unit. And then we broke it down into its smaller and smaller parts, the fascicle, the muscle fiber, the myofibril and also the sarcomeres that make up the myofibril and this is where we ended but that is where we're going to start today. So we got down to the sarcomere last video, the most basic unit of the skeletal muscle. If we were to zoom in a little bit more, it would look something like this. Two proteins that are fundamental to the muscle contraction are called actin and myosin. If we just take a look at one sarcomere unit, we can see that the actin is the red circular proteins, whilst the myosin look like hooks almost on a rod. So a lot of textbooks will talk about light and dark zones within the sarcomere and this simply is referring to where the actin and myosin overlap or not. When the actin is by itself, we normally refer to this as the light zone and where actin and myosin overlap, this is called the dark zone. So another name for the light zone is called the eye band and this simply refers to the same thing where actin is by itself and not overlapping myosin. And again, we have the dark zone where both actin and myosin overlap. So if we zoom out back to the sarcomere, we have our actin, myosin, and we also have this winding filament called titan. And this is a giant protein and acts almost like a molecular spring to help with muscle elasticity. It connects the Z disc, which as you can see here, separate each sarcomere unit to the M line, which is the middle of the sarcomere unit. So we take a quick look at the M line. Here it is in the middle of the sarcomere unit. And we also have the H zone, which is just where myosin is by itself. Again, looking at the M line, it's in the middle of each unit. And also we have the A band, which is essentially just where the myosin is irrespective if it's overlapping actin or not. Now, if we take a closer look at actin, it actually has these little swirly lines around it. So here's the actin, the red balls, the red proteins, and the swirly line, the yellow line, is called tropomyosin. And on that line, it's also got little proteins called troponin. So the actin that we were referring to earlier actually has tropomyosin and tropamin on it as well. And this will be discussed next video because it's fundamental to the muscle contraction. Do not forget these names. So the sliding filament theory is one of the most common theories about how a muscle contraction actually occurs. And it predominantly revolves around the, the myosin hooks and the actin heads. So as you can see here with the myosin hooks, the actin heads. All the myosin does is attach to the actin to make a cross bridge and then pulls it towards the M line. Then it detaches and then reattaches at a later point on the actin head and then pulls it again to the M line. It's just as simple as that. So as you can see here, the sarcomere unit, it's pulling both sides into the M line. Now it's a pretty bad animation, but as you can see here, the H zone decreases when the muscle contracts and increases when it relaxes. The A band does not change shape because the myosin heads don't actually move in position, they just pull on the actin heads. And as you can see here, I haven't put animations for the myosin heads, but as you can see, the actin moved towards the M line. And if you look at the sarcomere, you can start to understand how the muscle begins to contract and it all begins to move. And that's what we're going to talk about next video and discuss how this actually happens, sort of the biology behind the muscle contraction. So stay curious and we'll see you in the next video.